Hey everyone, it's Precious Berry here, back with No Dose Allowed Podcast, and today I have with us Miss Jocelyn True. She is a graduating senior at Carter Ritter College Preparatory. Tell us about you, because you are amazing. Thank like, you, literally. Precious. Thank you. Uh, my name is Jocelyn Troop. I am, like she said, I'm a graduating senior from Carter Ritter College Prep. I have a skincare business. I do youth activism, motivational speaking, just like the whole nine. And my biggest goal is just to push for a better world. Yeah, jack of all trades. Like I heard activism, skincare, entrepreneurship. Like tell us about like your activism. Like okay, so just starting off with activism. So all right. we start off with Kids of Gold. That's the financial literacy program mm-hmm. that we do. And what we're doing is we're taking youth in our communities and teaching them financial literacy to break generational curses. And mm. with the activism. It comes into us speaking up for ourselves. Right. And as youth, it's important for us to conversate and to have these tough conversations with adults that nobody wants to have yeah. to connect the generations. Yeah. I mean, like, I didn't hear the term financial literacy really a lot till I was applying for college. You know, exactly. it's another thing going to your dream school, but then you also have to realize, can I afford going to my exactly. dream school? And, you know, oh my gosh, my college advisor and so many people in the community has supported me about financial literacy. And then when you even speak about financial literacy, we can speak about the younger generation. Right. You know, do we know how to take care of a bank account? Do we know how do to make sure? Do we know about FICO? Yes. Do we know about credit? Do we know yes. how to really maneuver and get um, get out of student loans and student mm-hmm. debt that a lot of the um, class of 2020 and class of 2021 is now in yeah. because they wasn't educated before proceeding outside mm-hmm. of college, I mean, outside of high school. Yeah. <laughs> but it's definitely important, and I do believe that we need to have these conversations and that we need to have this background knowledge before stepping into the real world. Definitely. And that's why I started high school. Yeah, I remember when I was younger, oh my God, this is embarrassing, but like, you know, have you been on like Best Buy or like all them like Forever Twenty One Fashion mm-hmm. Nova, and they'd be like, if you get apply for this credit card, yeah, you, you get, get like, the APA race, they yeah. really target, <laughs> and they be tar- like young people, we quick on them deals and sales. Exactly. So I'm like, and they shoot. target high school students with mm-hmm. it. As soon as you get in high school, like you said, when we apply for, high, I mean, college. I'm yeah. sure. As soon as we apply for college, they um push you with the student loan right. way to break up your um college tuition and things and that such. If you mm-hmm. don't have a full ride scholarship, so. A lot of kids, they end up taking it because they want to, you know, leave their right. communities. They want to get away from home. They want to really step into adulthood too soon without right. the background knowledge that they need. So, yeah. so financial literacy was like your big take on activism? Yes. So like mine was, it was I always tell people, I don't know if you ever heard of me in some of my speeches, but using my voice. <laughs> yeah. I have, I've definitely <laughs> heard of you. you know <laughs> yeah, like I'm just big on making sure that I use my voice because in my own household, that wasn't allowed, which we could talk about those mental health exactly. stigmas in black communities. And I feel like just hearing from a lot of people, not even just in a black community, I feel like that's in every community, mm-hmm. um, that mental health stigma that they can't really speak out um, exactly. about what they want to talk about, even to younger children, even to adults. But I just wanted to make sure that my voice was heard because even though I use my voice in my household, in my community, I was like, and I got the most my important voice in my part. community. That's yeah. the most important part. It just really makes sure that you're projecting yourself and projecting your voice with confidence right. and with courage because that's what people respect. And a lot of um, kids, they're afraid to speak up because in the households, we are told to be quiet. Yeah. We are told to get out. We are told mm-hmm. to um, stay in a child's place. Mm-hmm. And when you're doing that, you're belittling that child. And you're taking away its its ability for freedom, right. basically, essentially. And with um, in black communities, what happens is the adults, they feel like they know everything. Mm-hmm. And... It takes it takes this aspect of this is what we was told in the church. This is what my parents did. This is what they did. This is what we know. And it's no and they don't make room for change. Mm-hmm. Now they're making room for change. Right. It's certain adults who are making room for change, but they're missing a, 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 an essential piece, and that's mm-hmm. us. So that's where we come in and just abide by everything that we was taught and really change our mindsets and start speaking up. So mm-hmm. when I see you speak up, I'm like, I need her. <laughs> I was like, I oh, need her. I need. So it's like, it's definitely knowing like when we're connected, we're strong together. And that's where unity comes yeah. in. Do you feel like you had some type of trauma at a young age where you had to literally realize the work that you're doing now serves, it pur- serves yes. its purpose? Yes, I definitely... One thing I say, I was built. I was built into this. Girl, me too. <laughs> I had to get broken down. Get, broken get, down. To my, get, to, get to my breaking point. I didn't like, wake up until I changed look, the world. Look, look. 
stop. Like when you really look at graphs, you look yes. at charts, you, you see how like if you're looking at stocks and stuff. Oh, that's my like, chills, girl. I'm no, sorry. for real, you looking at the trade. Look, yes. you seeing you seeing a, a constant graph. I was mm -hmm. never constantly elevated in in my household or just in my community or mm -hmm. just like, you know, it wasn't like that for me growing up. Right. I was uh, 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 all around. Yeah. So for me it was like Constant uh, hit, and yeah. then especially when we moving so much because like mm -hmm. I went to nine different schools in elementary school, oh and we in there only been to three. Oh, yeah, elementary, so, middle, high. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. I've definitely got You've to seen move. I've, I've seen a lot. I've experienced a lot. I know a lot, and it's like I've met so many different people who have mm -hmm. who have kind of shaped me from the way that they did me or right. the way that I treated them and it taught me so many lessons. Mm -hmm. So now I'm able to connect with people on a broader spectrum and help them see the things that they can't see, especially right. in St. Louis because it is a principality over us. Mm -hmm. It is a principality over St. Louis that is in the atmosphere. Right. And a lot of people can't see through that, but I can. They can. They can. I, I, oh my God. Like definitely. I just feel like too in our community, like we were talking about we belittle each other yeah especially the young people you know we quick to listen to all the big rappers and exactly. everything but like, they like when we have a young person who actually making moves moves in the community that's doing things it, legally they, they feel intimidated yeah they feel like they can't do what they doing they feel like they can't have the same blessings or they're not favored by the same god mm -hmm. my god will favor you like he's favoring me if mm -hmm. you seek him Definitely. if you go find god if you if you find my god i guarantee you he gonna bless you like he yeah. blessed me but because it was a point in time where I wasn't seeking him. Mm -hmm. It was a point in time where I did, where I kind of stopped believing in him because right. just of how much I was going through, I didn't feel like I yeah. deserved it. And Same. nobody deserves that. But you have to understand that and all that you go through is for a reason. Definitely. It's for a purpose because now we're able to talk on this level. We're mm -hmm. able to connect on, an intel on a more intellectual level. Right. And that's preparing us for the world that we're stepping into. Yeah. This world not going to be like this forever. It ain't. What I um, remember this quote I kept with me when I was going through a, um, a dark space in life at a mm -hmm. young age, in my young adolescence. It was like, the more you elevate, you're going to get tested. And so much you know, much as before, yes, and exactly. sometimes isolation takes transformation. That's all. That's what it is. <laughs> when you in isolation, when you yeah. by yourself, you you really there with God. I he know, is right? working on he, you. He is. He working. He is working on you. Mm -hmm. And that's why people don't understand what COVID was. Yeah, that was isolation for everybody. everybody. God shut down the world for everybody. Mm -hmm. Wasn't nobody making no money. Nobody was moving was. unless you was hustling and doing mm -hmm. something under the dirt. Right. That's what it was. And it opened people, up the doors too. Exactly. It people. opened up a lot of doors, but God under He He let us understand who He was. Right. And the thing is, within COVID, a lot of kids did transform. They started I, to I wake up and understand that this world is a little some some not right. I, I was like that too because during COVID, I, I tell people this too. I didn't know what mental health was till COVID. You know, I didn't. Nobody, because we don't talk about I didn't about feel it. normal. You know, exactly. Because I was like, what is these A lot of stuff started, started, started yeah. making sense. And the more information that we was given with the algorithm, the mm -hmm. more we started to learn. And that's why the government wanted to ban TikTok, because yeah. of what it was doing. And it was definitely educating us on a broader mm -hmm. global spectrum. So when we get into that, these kids, kids have to understand right. what this process is and what the the um mm -hmm. justice system is and the yeah. things and this such and what the government is and how they move the federal reserve yeah. that you got to understand where your money's going and yeah. what's going on right. and that's where education is a big part of everything right knowledge is power and kids yeah. have to understand that what's this is quote i love quotes i don't know i'm always i, got you. I, got you. I would like it you know i'm always saying a quote it's, it's gonna, gonna keep you yeah. motivated it's well it was like what knowledge does power have if you don't apply it? What power does knowledge have exactly. if you don't apply it? Cause now you yeah. just, it's, I know so many, I, I, cause I, like I said, it takes courage. So yeah. I talk to homeless people and just see what, like, see what they know, see what I know. They be the, the smartest, smartest people. people. They be the smartest people. They be the smartest people. They be the smartest people. But it's the, it's the fear, it's the spirit of mm -hmm. fear. And that's something that God did not give us. It's so many people that I know who tells me, you just gotta go. Right. Because if you don't go, you gonna wake up in 40 years and be like, dang. Right. Thing, and you miss opportunity after opportunity mm -hmm. and you missing chance after chance God can only give you so, so much. much if you're not gonna do the work right if you can't take care of this how can he trust you with that mm -hmm. so God want to see what you do in your lows 
Exactly. And then when you in your highs, he's like, okay, I know how to handle exactly. this situation. God wants you to praise him and glorify yes. him in highs and lows. And that's another lesson that I'm yeah. learning as well. Mm -hmm. So, and as we, you know, because we all growing together. We, like, you watch we, Sarah Jakes? Yes. Yeah. That's my life. <laughs> Like, my mom was Sarah Jakes. Them, them did you go see her in February? Oh, no, I didn't. I did. You did? Yeah, it's girl, you know, I'm going to cry. I love, I love her so much. I thought it was powerful. I, I know. You remember she took her wig off a couple weeks girl. ago? She's like, I'm about to take it off. I'm about to take it off. Like, yes, go ahead, Sarah. Take the wig off. Like, I love Sarah Jakes. I yes. just watched the TV Jakes this morning. Like, I watched you the You watched the service thing. Yeah, so you watched the service thing. Yeah, mm -hmm. So, you was in the service. So, y'all already know. Y'all need to reconcile with God and understand that. You can still, yeah. you still have time. Glory in the wilderness. Well, you got time watch today. Mm -hmm. Get it, get it today. Yeah, you should get her book. I need to get this book. Thank you. Yeah, disruptive. I was just uh, watching a couple days. I'm trying to find a book. I'm like, y'all have the book in here. They're like, what is that? I'm like, yeah, y'all know what Y'all know what name is. Y'all know what name is. Give us the book. You need a book. What other pastors do you like? I like uh, Pastor, Pastor Keon. Pastor Torrey Roberts. Torrey, her what? His wife. Hey. I mean, her wife. Oh. <laughs> no, her husband. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. Forgive we me. love y'all. Forgive, forgive me. We love the same. Forgive us. God is good. Forgive us. Who else you like? Um, I like? I know every gospel song. So I mean, I mean my mom, she definitely tells me because like my mom, she's technically one of the spiritual leaders as well. Miss mm. Juanita Reed. Mm -hmm. So um, I don't really venture too far off from what she's talking. Yeah. And it keeps me in the mindset of like I can't listen to everybody because right. as soon as I started listening to outside voices uh, things yeah. started to go wrong so yeah that's true and as soon as i started to venture from the course and the way mm -hmm. that she was raising me things yeah. started to go wrong and also i the i used to do this like a couple of years ago i used to church hop a lot but then i have to realize i can't do that because you, you didn't hear too many voices it's so many, many, you yeah. gotta stay in the spirit and you gotta stay in one flow that's why td jake's always talking about what's feeding you because mm -hmm. you can get fed you can get fed crumbs and be satisfied with it yes some people can. can and then like he says other people hungry other people mm -hmm. don't eat the table yeah, yeah. That, that church is people who eat the table mm -hmm. we, we that hungry we that thirsty yeah and that's and that's why we get the yeah. amount of about yeah, so yeah. we get the soil that we get from there. Yeah, yeah. We, yeah. And then my um, my I know girl. Was gotta, I know <laughs> my favorite sermon from Sarah would have to be. It was called Glory Ooh, Triggers. Glory Triggers. My basis. Which one? You want me to tell you about it a little bit? Yeah. I know. I, I know that one, but I'm trying to think of mine because. Which one? I I, so I know based off the outfit she be having. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm trying to think. I'm trying Sorry, to think. Yeah. She had all them little crazy pants with oh, the yeah. hair. I know what you're talking about. And she had took off the heel. Girl, she took off the heel. started walking barefoot, stomping it. I'm like, oh. Is she on the blue pants? Not the blue pants. Um, the blue pants was blue, too. I know exactly what you're talking about. But, um. Girl, we like, Hey, we got a conference coming up in Austin, Texas, September 23rd to the 26th. If you want to invite us, two of us. Okay. Just, you know. We cover 25% of the plane tickets, though. But, like, just get us together. That's crazy. I did not know. I'm a big like spiritual person. Me too. So like that's just, I, it's, that's, that's the whole yeah, point. I like that spiritual being. Beings. And like your skin is like so beautiful. Like Thank you so much. It's glowing. Like Thank you gotta you tell so me much. like about it because I know you talked about your skincare earlier. Thank you. So um, my skincare business is Josh and Skin. Mm -hmm. And so what we promote is healthy mind, healthy body, healthy spirit. Mm -hmm. And in it, it comes with just detoxing your skin. Mm. Do just detox, and as you start clogging your pores with like a lot of stuff, like you got the sweat, salt, all types of things that can destroy your skin barrier, it's definitely important that you right. detox. So my chlorophyll, that's just that's what I sell for my skincare. You just put it in your water. I wish I had some. Mm -hmm. Put it in your water, and then that was my fault, y'all. Sorry, <laughs> I didn't know. But okay, so how do you see it skyrocketing? You said it was. I know you said it was a family business. So. Um, so my fa our family business is the Eighth Wonder. We also sell shea butter as well. So um, I'll definitely get you some. So um, with the shea butter, what we do, handmade. Home, well, yeah, it is handmade, homemade. You know, mm -hmm. What you say? It's imported, all organic. And so that's with that as well. But as far as my business, like in the future and skyrocketing, I definitely see it as cool. Yeah, she told me to lay off the turmeric scrub. <laughs> yeah. Hey, that can that can provide this um <laughs> this color discoloration and hyperpigmentation. What they call skin. that when you work on the face? It's called a um dermatologist. 
Yeah, I think it is dermatology. Do you see yourself doing that? Um, I do in college. In college? Uh, actually, I'm. In college. Yeah, talk about college. Okay. Yeah. So actually, right now, um, studying to be a certified esthetician, so I can't do it during. Esthetician. That's what I'm trying yeah, to say. Yeah. Uh, doing it during college. Mm -hmm. So that's a little sign or whatever. But mm -hmm. uh, just also to have that certification, just in case I do need to mm -hmm. get into that line of work as well, and then also just you know continue to grow my business and just have stuff in my uh, portfolio. Okay, okay. This I told y'all, she a jack of all trades. Like she just doing everything. Like one thing I love about like young people, and especially like people like yourself, if one thing don't work out, you go to the next thing. Like you know? my problem is I try to make everything work out. <laughs> no, I'm like that too. Like <laughs> I try to make everything work out. If my um, if my eyes set on it, I'm, I'm gonna try. And that's what we need to really tell a lot of young people. You just gotta try. We gotta try. You gotta try. Give your dreams a chance. chance. Give your dreams you a chance. Give every. That everything that every, every opportunity dream, every yes because you never know what's really deep down inside of you mm -hmm. i did not know i like chemistry because like i said out there like out there <laughs> when we was in the rockwood um yeah. and when i was in the rockwood school district mm -hmm. we was they never made that connection with me they didn't even allow me into the um the program the class because mm -hmm. they felt the white student would right. have succeeded better Right. So I didn't even get the opportunity to do what I wanted to do. Mm. So that definitely taught me a lot. Like, and you was in the DSEG program? I was, the big program. <sighs> what um, school did you, where you were originally supposed I, to go to in your community? No, my mom, she she decided to put us in there for mm -hmm. better education because I'm from Arizona. I was raised in Arizona. Oh, you're not from St. Louis? I was born and I was raised in Arizona. Oh, so wow. I moved, I okay, moved when I was five. Sense. And when we came back, my mom wanted to make sure that we didn't have like the like a yeah. big culture shock, but it was a big culture shock yeah. just because it's like it's yeah. still the Midwest from the West Coast. So you so went, like, you was in Rockwood District. Yes, we were. Yeah, I went to Riverview. Like I was in a provincially accredited district, mm -hmm. you know, and the education that you get in like Rockwood, Ladue, and Clayton, and Chesterfield, and the Parkway District is better than ours. You know, and that's something that I fight on every single day is education too, because we need young people to have the quality as quality education that the Clayton or Ladue students yes. have. And that's, and that's you know, definitely and our system is broken. Our education system is broken. I would say that blatantly. It's it definitely is St. Louis public schools. Yes, like the lack of funding and it's and mm -hmm. the panel they have every equal opportunity to advance themselves to get the funding that they need for these students, and they don't. Mm -hmm. And that's something that needs to be said like we need to be investing back into our community so students like who was like me who's still out there in those mm -hmm. um dca programs and who are, who are still out there in those um, yeah. white public institutions mm -hmm. they still need people yeah. to care for them and mm -hmm. out there they don't so if you bring them back into their community mm -hmm. and fund them yeah with good education mm -hmm. just imagine what they could do it's so much that we can do in education and like to the food to the resources, to the after school activities, to children who have IEPs, to all of that. Like we really need to really invest in our youth and the school is gonna be the only option at this point. It's, it's parents can it's been a school. Parents going through their own struggles too. And we do at we do need to hold our parents accountable, but every parent probably doesn't know how to they parent. don't know. And there's no and I tell people they doing what their parents yeah. do. It's a continuous cycle. There's no book to it's no, raise it, a child. It is no book to raise a child. But you it's not. that's why I take God into this. Because mm -hmm. he's giving us the structure that we need with the Bible. And yeah. if you study the word as my mom did, my mom will put her time with me. Mm -hmm. And I have six other siblings. Mm -hmm. And she put, she laid a foundation in every single one of us. Mm -hmm. So not one of us can say we don't know what to do. We don't know right, right from wrong. We don't know God. Not one of us can say that. Mm -hmm. So or at least say that, no, not one of us can say that, it ain't no excuse. Yeah, I, that's, that's true, but then a lot of young people, we forget to learn how to work in the middle of chaos yeah. and confusion. Exactly, and that's, and, that's, and, that's, and, that's, and that's something that I've had to understand by speaking to a lot of young people and speaking to myself, mm -hmm. because there were points in time where I thought that because of who I was, I can't be what I want to become. Exactly. Because of the struggles that I've been through, and to where I said it felt like I was just only in a box that I couldn't escape that box. Mm -hmm. But I had to learn how to slowly crawl. I always tell people to take the steps, steps. in the elevator. Exactly. Because sometimes when you take those steps, you can fall back two times, but you have to get yourself right back exactly. up. I don't want to just shoot up. Because what did I learn to shoot up? Why shooting up? Exactly, so, and that's another yeah. thing. People love overnight success. That's, they do. They love overnight success in our. Um, in our generation mm -hmm. but the thing is with overnight success what true work was put in right. off that one 
when you constantly building your steps, and that's why I move the way that I move, because I know mm -hmm. that I'm constantly building my steps. Whether it looks like I am or not, I'm constantly building steps to get to where I yeah. need to be. Because it's not about it's not about the mess. Like it's not it's about not public um, glorification. Mm -hmm. And that's one thing that I'm learning as well. It's not about being famous. It's not about that it's about the kingdom and yeah. the work that we do and the people that we touch and who we talk to and who we help change change right. lives to save another soul. Right. That's it. true. So I know we got to wrap this up. Man, but like this is good though. This is good. We're I don't know. We we gonna we gonna get that together. We're going out to lunch. I want to make that clear. So um probably this week or next week, whenever oh, you're free. You. But like what do you mm -hmm. want parents to know? about when their child may be going through struggles. Now, I know you can't speak for every parent, but what is something that you would want parents to think about when their child is being, I would say, the term vulnerable? Because okay. vulnerable I'm, can be good or bad. Okay, I'll definitely say, I'll say what I said to my mom. And that's definitely like just receiving me and mm -hmm. then how I receive you. So, mm -hmm. and what I tell you, I would want you to, my mom, she's always, like she always tells me, she's never gonna misguide me, she's never gonna dislike like she's never gonna show disloyalty towards me. Right. And I shouldn't do the same to her. I should always show her their respect level. So if we are having some type of disagreement or conversation, it should be a mutual respect level in it because you just don't cross lines. Mm. And you showing parents that type of respect, kids gotta understand that that the parent is in four different places probably. So when you pushing um when you pushing it pushing like past traumas that that they did to you or that right. you experienced through them, then you got to make sure that they in a the mental space to do right. do so. So yeah. they can receive you properly. Because if you come to your mama while you washing dishes, while she washing dishes and you be like, mama, this, this, and that, and then she click off on you, <laughs> it's like, dang. Right. And then that just creates... Right yeah. And then that just creates more, um, you know, confusion and, like, distrust. So what I would definitely say to parents is... Be ready to receive your child when they come to you. Right. And children, be ready to see what your parents have to say. Because yeah. you never know what was going on in the background during those times of trauma and those times of hurt. Oh, y'all. Dropping bombshells. Like, boom, 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 boom. Like, y'all will definitely just get familiar with this face because she's not just going to be I'm local. Going she's not going to be state. <laughs> she's going to no be right. national. <laughs> she's going to be international. Like, Thank literally, y'all. Remember Thank this name, Jocelyn Troop. She's doing her thing. Like, just keep going. Keep striving. Keep being, a, keep being the beautiful, black, gifted soul that you are. Thank you. Because God will open up so many doors for you if you keep continuing to do the work that he has laid for you. And keep striving and persevering because what makes you stand out is being different. I really want you to drop down all your social media so I they will. can follow you. Um, so, you can follow me on Instagram at Jocelyn, double N, Troop. That's T-R-O-U-P-E. And that's Jocelyn, J-O-S-H-L-Y-N-N. -N. All right, y'all. That's and it. Went out. And then Joshua Skin, that's J O S H L Y N, Skin, S K Y N, and Kids of Gold, S T L. All right, y'all. Y'all heard it from the best. Thank you all for tuning in. I hope this video has been very amazing and impactful. I will see you all later. Bye.